I should probably make this a bit more professional looking. Hey guys, I'm Tom Tech Jab. I'm here in Los Angeles where Apple have just unveiled a whole new range of MacBook Pros as well as iMacs, Mac Minis, and the entire M4 series of chips. So let me run you through what's new and if this is all worth getting excited about. So let's start with the new MacBook Pro which has been refreshed to the new M4 series with the M4, the Pro and the Max chip. This is the first time we've seen an M4 Max offering, as you'd expect, much faster processing, graphics, neural engine performance. But as well as a new chip, we also now have a nano texture option for the display. And it's a similar micro etching to the glass that we've seen on their studio displays and the XDR display. And it significantly reduces glare and reflections, making your laptop screen, which of course is the thing that you're looking at all the time, much easier to use, particularly outdoors or if you've got strong ambient lighting around you. And this nano texture is available on all the new MacBook Pros and it only costs an extra 150. I say only, but in the grand scheme of things and compared to how much it costs when you spec it on one of their displays, their desktop displays, I think it's a pretty good deal. And given you're probably gonna take your you know, portable laptop around with you, having a less reflective screen is a really big selling point. Not only that, but they've also boosted the brightness, the regular SDR brightness from 600 nits to 1000 nits, still peaking at 1600 nits for HDR content. But most of the time, you can see my little script and notes here, uh, you're just looking at the regular SDR brightness. And so I've actually had to use apps like Vivid. Uh, there's a couple other ones to unlock the HDR brightness across the whole screen. Now I'm very pleased to say that they've boosted it to 1000 nits. And especially if you pair it with the nano texture option, the screen's gonna look a whole lot nicer. Still 120Hz and still mini LED though, no OLED option yet. We also have a longer battery life. Apple's claiming up to 24 hours versus 22 on last year's model. And that's measured on the 16 inch version. So I would expect the 14 inch to last a little bit less than that. We also have Thunderbolt 5, but only if you spec a MacBook Pro 14 or 16 with the M4 Pro or Max chip. The base entry level M4 still gets the regular Thunderbolt 4, which is absolutely fine. Thunderbolt 5 is very much a future proofing thing, which I think perhaps is gonna uh, lead the way for refreshed desktop displays from Apple, perhaps with ProMotion screens, because obviously the studio display, the XDR display, they're all 60 hertz, but also for higher end docks and hubs and uh, external storage. It's very much a professional use case right now, but given you're probably gonna hang on to your laptop for the next three, four, five years, I think having Thunderbolt 5 will be a nice future-proofing feature. And speaking of ports, the 14-inch MacBook now gets a third Thunderbolt port. Currently, you only get two. And even with the base M4 version, not only do you get the extra Thunderbolt, but it can now support two external displays plus the screen. Previously on the last year's M3 model, you only had two ports and it only supported one external screen. So especially for the base version, much better connectivity. Still Wi-Fi 6E though, no Wi-Fi 7, unfortunately. All new MacBook Pros also benefit from an improved 12 megapixel webcam, which now gets center stage, very much like we have on the iPad, so it can track you around the scene if you're FaceTiming or Zooming. And the new camera also promises better video quality, which I think is probably gonna be a more useful thing. But for me, I think the best bit is across the new iMacs, the new Mac Minis, which I adore, I can't wait to get one of those, and the new MacBook Pros, base configuration is now 16 gigs of memory, up from eight. The fact that we could buy a eight gigabyte memory MacBook Pro is just insane to me. Now that has been fixed and the minimum spec is 16 plus five, 12 gigs of storage. And then you can spec it up insanely high from there. I think it tops out at about 7,349 pounds for a top spec M4 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro, which I doubt many of us will be buying. So for the MacBook Pros, we have the new M4 series of chips. We have the improved battery life, the better webcam, with center stage. Uh, we have the additional Thunderbolt port for the 14 inch version and also support for an extra external display, higher SDR brightness and the nano texture option, Thunderbolt 5 on the M4 Pro and Max versions, and it all starts at the same price. I'm genuinely quite excited about this refresh. It does physically look the same. The only change, as I say, is the addition of the extra port on the 14 inch. And they've also finally discontinued the space gray colorway. Now you have silver and space black across all models. I think last year you had to get the Pro to get the space black. Now it's silver or space black across the entire lineup, which makes things a lot easier. Now, before we dive into the differences between the M4 Pro and Max and which one you should go for, my main takeaway about these MacBook Pros is that I think the base entry level cheapest one which is 15, 99 pounds, same in dollars, is gonna be the one to go for. The fact that you get 16 gigs of memory, 512 storage, that's plenty. If you need more, you can plug in an external SSD. You're getting better performance, you're getting the extra port, the uh, extra external display, longer battery life, better webcam. Unless you specifically need a 16 inch screen uh, or you want a more powerful chip for your developing and rendering and creating, then yeah, hands down for most people, I would say get yourself just the basic cheapest 
M4 MacBook Pro 14 inch. If you want the 16 inch, unfortunately, you are gonna have to pay an extra 900 pounds. You do get a higher spec M4 Pro with that and some other uh, upgrades, but it's not as simple as saying, oh, I prefer a bigger screen, so I'm just gonna get that. It's almost a thousand pounds extra. So for most people, I would get the 14. It's also lighter and thinner because otherwise there's actually been no change to the weight or the dimensions of the laptop. So yeah, go for a 14 inch M4. Ooh, but wait, before you go out and buy a shiny MacBook Pro and spend 1,600 pounds or whatever it is, uh, actually, Apple have quietly upgraded the MacBook Air. It now comes with 16 gigs of memory as well, the M2 and the M3 versions of the Air. So you can get a 999 pound, so thousand pound, thousand dollar M2 MacBook Air now with 16 gigs of memory and 256 gigs base storage. I've always suggested, always recommended that you pay the extra 200 pounds to upgrade the memory from eight to 16. Now you get that for free. Incredible, that actually might be the bigger news for most people. We are of course expecting refreshed M4 powered MacBook Airs probably springtime next year. We're not exactly sure. Maybe a WWDC in June. It could be a little bit, bit of a wait. But if you are getting what I like to call itchy wallet and thinking about buying a new MacBook, then the MacBook Airs are incredible as well for the vast majority of people. Most people don't need the performance of the Pro, although I do miss the high refresh screen. But the fact that you're now getting double that base memory for free is actually a really big deal. Thank you, Apple. Now, in terms of the new chip, the M4 series, we actually first saw the M4 chip in the iPad Pros, which launched a few months ago, but now they're coming to their MacBook Pros with the M4, the M4 Pro, and the top dog, the M4 Max, which, as you would expect, gets progressively more powerful and a whole lot more expensive. But these new chips are part of their second generation three nanometer family. And Apple is saying that this includes the world's fastest CPU core. And not only is it much faster in terms of the processor, the graphics, the neural engine, the media encoders, but we're also getting better performance per watt, which essentially means better battery life as well. Which compared to the older and actually now discontinued 13 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 from three years ago, I guess now, we're looking at between 1.7 and 3.4 times faster performance across a variety of creative apps. Although the base new model is almost 11 times faster at 3D rendering than the last MacBook with an Intel i7 chip. Now, I have only had hands-on with these new laptops. I haven't been able to benchmark or review them yet. That will be coming soon, so make sure you've hit that subscribe button. But I think it's fair to say, probably, if you have an M2 or M3 series MacBook Pro, it's unlikely to be worth the upgrade, especially since Apple is comparing the performance of the M4 series, the Pro and the Max, to the M1 and also the older Intel version. I think, quite honestly, if you're still rocking an Intel version of a MacBook Pro, what are you doing with your life? This is a fantastic time to upgrade. The problem for Apple, though, has been that the M1, the uh, jump from Intel to uh, Apple Silicon with the M1 was such a game changer and is still so capable even now that it's been tough to convince people to upgrade to any of these uh, subsequent generations. It could finally be worth upgrading, especially with the nicer screen and better connectivity and webcam and all that nice stuff as well. But if you're thinking, oh, should I pay the extra for an M4 Pro or even dare go for the M4 Max? Well, the fact that Apple is quoting performance in Max on Redshift for rendering and math work simulation and Oxford's DNA sequencing program goes to show the kind of applications that they reckon people who should go for an M4 Pro or Max should be using. I think unless you're editing a Pixar movie or developing a game or doing something incredibly demanding or just have money to burn, do not get an M4 Max. That is purely for the industry or if you've just got very deep pockets or you're buying on the business and need to save some tax or something like that. I think it's worth considering the M4 Pro if you're doing intensive 4K video editing, lots of raw files for photo. I do think though, if you are considering a MacBook Pro, clearly you need the extra performance for something or you want the higher, better, brighter, faster screen for something. So if you are gonna skip the air, pay a whole lot more for a MacBook Pro model and you know factor in the extra weight and heft of it all, then I would probably spend that little bit extra and go for the M4 Pro chip. Please do wait for benchmarks as well. You can always pre-order one of the laptops and cancel it uh, when you see the benchmarks come out. But I think given the nature of the Pro laptop, the M4 Pro chip, the base one for £2,000 or $2,000, which gets you the 24 gigs of memory, 512 storage, maybe you'd want to opt that to a terabyte. That would probably be my pick. What about Apple intelligence though? Well, obviously Apple is making a big song and dance about it, but the kind of weird slow rollout across the phones and laptops I wouldn't buy a new laptop for Apple Intelligence, especially considering it actually does support M1 Max. Anything with an M1 iPad or MacBook will get Apple Intelligence. They say the neural engine in the M4 is around three times faster than the one in the M1, but 
They're still saying it will support it, so we'll have to do some tests to see what actual real-world performance difference that makes. I think in terms of office work and writing and emails, having those sort of shortcuts could be helpful. We've got Image Playground coming soon. Not sure how many people are going to use that, but let's wait and see. We're going to get more features over time. So that's the new M4 powered 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro. Very excited for this full review coming soon. But the reason I'm here in a hotel room in Los Angeles is because Apple all this week have been releasing new Mac products with a refreshed iMac and a refreshed Mac mini, all with the M4 chips and some new accessories, including, thank goodness, USB-C Magic Keyboard, Magic Trackpad, and Magic Mouse, replacing the Lightning port. No design change otherwise, but we have the new port, as well as a new Thunderbolt 5 Pro cable you can buy. Which means, yes, the Magic Mouse still charges underneath. Which side of the argument are you on here? Because some people say, well, you know, you just flip it, charge it for five to 10 minutes, go for a coffee break, and then you're good for the next month. And you have to worry about having it plugged in and a bungeeing cord. Other people think that it's the worst design in the history of design. Where do you stand on the Magic Mouse? Either way, good to see USB-C. It would have been good to see some other upgrades, perhaps haptic feedback or a redesigned charging port. I don't think the new iMac is particularly exciting. Again, M4 chip, although only the base model, there's no Pro or Max version there. But we do have a better webcam with desk view. We've got Thunderbolt 4 ports. They've doubled the base memory to 16 gigabytes, but the screen is still the same, 24 inches, 4.5K, still 60 Hertz, and there is still no larger 27 inch model, unfortunately. No change to the design, although they've slightly tweaked the colors. Not the most exciting update for the iMac. What I am much more excited about is the new Mac mini, which absolutely lives up to its name, being almost half the size in terms of overall footprint than the old model. It's also gone from the M2 up to the M4 and also M4 Pro. They've also doubled the base memory to 16 gigabytes. We get Thunderbolt 4 and Thunderbolt 5 on the Pro version. It's also the first carbon neutral Mac, which is great to see. And given how small it is, it's five by five inches square and about two inches deep. So it's slightly taller than the old model, but overall much, much smaller. You could, I don't know, stick it to the back of your monitor, hide it on your desk, put it in your backpack. You could do a, I don't know, portable system with it. I'm really excited to play with the Mac mini and I will be reviewing that as well. And I think the entry level basic model for 599, same in pounds and dollars, is the one to go for. That's a great price uh, because the M4 Pro version is over twice as expensive. So what do you think of this crazy Mac refresh week? Obviously we haven't had new Airs, although they have doubled the memory. Uh, we haven't had a new Mac Studio or Mac Pro desktop yet. That'll probably be coming next year. But what do you reckon? Are you going to be ordering a new laptop or iMac or Mac Mini? Let me know in the comments below.